Okay. Yeah, turn that light on. Let's see. Who are? Do we have everyone right now? Yes. I think Evan might come, but I don't know if he is. Okay, Chelsea. We're all back from our bathroom breaks. <laughs> Sounds good. Do we want to maybe do this? Uh, we'll introduce our end, and then maybe can you help facilitate introductions on your end, just so we know who we have in the room and what role, um, and maybe how that person might be involved in the marketing automation project, whether involved directly or maybe just reaping the benefits of it. That would be great. But Absolutely. Do a quick intro. On our end, um, I'm Chelsea. I'm your account rep, so I will work with you up until the point you make a decision. If you come on board with Marketo, I'll remain a point of contact for you after the fact as well. And then I also have my colleague Russ here. Yeah, hey guys, this is Russ. Um, so you guys, uh, we met when I was in Portland with Chelsea yeah, uh, a few weeks ago already. Yeah, so, how you doing, uh, Russ? We have quick that's been. Um, but, uh, yeah, nice to meet everybody else that I haven't met in person or before yet. Um, so I'm a, for those that don't know, I'm a solutions consultant, so I'm Chelsea's counterpart in terms of knowing the platform of Marketo in and out, really aligning that with what you guys are looking to do. Um, I had a great chance to talk with Trevor uh, and you guys just to get a sense of, of you know, some of the biggest uh, factors in your decision on a tool like this and the dynamics of your audiences. Uh, so feel free to get a handle on things. Um, I've been here with, with Marketo about two years, Chelsea, about uh, twice as long, she, she outranks me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, really looking forward to going through the, the tool again. Thanks. Awesome. Is that, okay, over here we have me and Michael, who you have met before, and we're excited to see the demo again. And then I have a few, I have five wonderful colleagues here down from our operations and account management team. So I'm just going to let them go around the horn and introduce themselves real quick and what they do. Michaela. <laughs> hey, my name is Michaela. Uh, I am an operations coordinator here and I support half the account management team in basically any of their day-to-day -day needs, um, assisting them with things that they might need in terms of helping them with their accounts in the field, or with their regional consultants, or um, really just anything they might need help with when they're not um, able to do it themselves. And we have Sam here too. He assists the other uh, account managers, the other half. Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, like Michaela said, I'm the other ops coordinator, and hopefully the software uh, will help replace some of the more manual tasks that we do when it comes to the management. Yes. Yeah. And then we have three account managers here. So if one of you three just want to inter say what you guys do, Evan. Uh, I don't hi. Know. <laughs> hi. Uh, this is Evan. I walked in about 10 seconds ago, so sorry if I missed your introduction. Uh, account manager. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, we work with, uh, we're kind of the middleman between the, F the FPC, what our planning center is here at the Portland Home Office. Um, and a lot of the other departments here, um, and then out in the field, our sales sales managers and uh, you know agents out in the field. So basically, try to help with any requests that come in for there. Um, a lot of lead management, um, just trying to make sure that our lead programs are running, that accounts are staying profitable. Um, that's in a nutshell what we do. Every day is different, so it just really depends what what requests roll in. And we have Richard and Megan here as well, who are account managers. And Chelsea, kind of what we talked about on the phone, uh, how we envision them, uh, these operation quarters and account managers, eventually using automation is, right now the email campaigns that we are doing, Sam and Michaela have to go in and insert every single lead manually into our CRM. So that's why we're only sending out 100 a day because we don't have anything in place uh, to where it's really automated. So um, we... Uh, Automation would make everyone's job a lot easier. Got it. Perfect. And that's great. And um, I will ask, as we go through the demo, we love examples and we love use cases. So um, a couple of you said, hey, I hope this helps to automate things or we're looking forward to seeing how this can make our lives better. If we don't hit on something that will make your life better, please ask and let us know. Because um, it's really important that you guys feel comfortable with this and you guys feel excited that Hey, Marketo can help us. So if there's a particular pain point or a wish, an item on your wish list, please let us know and we'll let you know 
hey, yes, we can do it. Here's how you do it. Maybe you have a couple options or no, that's not completely supported. Um, so we love participation and lots of questions. Uh, so there's no stupid questions. Please remember that. Sounds so, good. What we're looking at here, just to kind of jump in and get started, we're looking at the Marketo home screen here. So Marketo is, you can think of Marketo as an engagement platform in which you can send out emails as well as measure the engagement of the people you're communicating with. So that's engagement on your website with the emails that are sent out through Marketo. Um, it can sometimes be interaction with your direct mail channel. Um, it could be interactions with your call center. Uh, Marketo is that one central hub to, to grab all of that data and ultimately tell you these are the people who are most engaged. Uh, these are the people that look like they're interested. And these are the people that you should be focusing your time on. So we'll walk through some different parts of the platform, but in a nutshell, that's what we are proposing. It's an engagement platform so you guys can more easily interact with, you know, consumers who may be looking for end-of-life services. Maybe it's their children who are looking for end-of-life services for them. Or maybe it's directly with the funeral home directors. You can engage all different types of audiences with very tailored messaging. Any questions so far on Marketo, kind of simply put, or any, any questions so far? I think we're good so far. Perfect. So one of the things that our customers will do when they get Marketo is they'll work with our enablement team to really map out the journey. What kind of customer journey are we trying to create for our target audiences? Now, Russ and I have built out a journey that we think incorporates some of the milestones that we've gotten from our conversations with your team and learning more about your process. Now, the good thing about these uh, these journeys is they're completely customizable. So this will represent whatever Coca-Cola wants it to represent. So what we're looking at here are various stages of that journey. So again, completely customizable. We start with the anonymous stage because this is when people come to your website or we just don't know who they are. Um, so I did mention we can track engagement on the website. So if anybody that hits your website each of you, if you go to marketo.com, you're registered as an anonymous visitor. You won't yet be known to us as being Marketo until you fill out a form on the website or click a link in an email that we sent. So we may have your contact information. We can email you, but as soon as you click that link in an email, we're now able to say, we know exactly what you're doing on the website because we can track you via the I have a quick question about these, um, if you want to call them widgets or action items that you have listed on the screen. Um, yep. um, how easy is it to incorporate with our current CRM system? Um, the mail drop mm -hmm. items, like for example, we do our own mail drops. Is it easy to, I, once we recognize the, the person, is it easy to upload a data field from our CRM system? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So this is Russ. Um, that's what we'll get into kind of in the segmentation topic, and we plan to demo actually uploading that CSV document um, that contains whatever fields you want it to contain when you pull it out of CRM. And, and just to kind of level set on that, by the way, and this is what you know, we've talked about with Trevor and Michael so far, is you know, given the version of Dynamics you guys are on and how there's some plans to upgrade in the future, uh, in the meantime, Marketo is also very effective as what we call standalone type of, uh, of, of setup where it's not directly booked to your CRM database, but you can still kind of mold the Marketo database so it has the same basic fields that you need from CRM with the exact same names that they have in CRM. That way, there's no translating or mapping. You should be able to confidently go into CRM, look at who you want to segment, and pull a list, stick it in Marketo, and then from there, um, you can slice and dice your audiences based on those data fields. And that was Michaela, right? Oh, this is Megan. Megan, okay. And so is it possible? The, to, the short answer is yes. For right now, you guys will be doing a list upload to tell us that the mail has been dropped for those people. So looking back on the journey, once you upload a list into Marketo telling us that the mail has been dropped, we'll categorize them as such. In the future, when Dynamics is upgraded, Marketo will be able to support 
support a very tight integration. So instead of uh, uploading a list directly to Marketo, maybe that's a field in dynamics that you guys are updating. Maybe it's status saying, hey, mail drop has been completed. And maybe there's a date on that. Right. right. And then Marketo can read that in dynamics automatically. So either way, we'll get the data in. Um, but you will notice as we go through the demo, there will be parts where we say, here's what you can do today, and then here's how this, this will look in the future um, when Dynamics is integrated, because uh, we can accomplish you know, some of the same things both ways, um, but there are some improvements that we'll be sure to point out. But does that answer your question? Yeah, and then at the level that we're looking at now, would it have the ability where we could upload like a CSV file or CVS file every night? Um, and make those changes like once daily, or is that something that we have to wait until the upgrade was purchased? No, so that's the idea behind like the way you would use Marketo is when we talk about uploading a list, the idea is that you can do, you know, one or a few lar large uploads like you meant, or like you mentioned of like once a day. And then within Marketo where you're actually doing the segmentation and list point. So you might throw in, you know, 10,000, 20,000 people or whatever it is. And then maybe some of your campaigns only target a thousand of those people. Um, you're not stuck deliberately uploading the final list of your campaign every time. You just bulk upload and then use Marketo to do the finer tuning segments, the more directed segments. Whether that's off mail drop data into the file that you're uploading or it's just basic profile data, like where does the person live? How old are they? Um, other things you probably for want any, to check. For any info you collect in the survey. Yeah. So you can absolutely do a list upload uh, once a day, which will then categorize them here in this journey. And the great thing about using an automated tool is that can also trigger an email send, for example. If you drop the mail, maybe once you do that upload, if you want to send anybody whose email we do have an email saying, hey, we just sent you the survey, look out for the survey in just a few days, call if you have any questions. Or maybe that's a more appropriate follow-up after you receive the survey. But there's quite a few things that you can do with it, um, even though you're uploading the list maybe once a day. Fantastic. That Thank sounds you. great. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah, to, to kind of summarize this again, this, this journey map is what every you know, new consumer or you know, home come in could work through. You could you could even have like a consumer specific model and a home specific model. But really, the idea is both visual to represent those key milestones everybody goes through, and then it's also going to be functional. And you know, this transition I'm clicking on here, the arrow between acquisition and mail drop. There's probably uh, a very definitive entry in a CRM field that would indicate that status has now changed because they've, they've been sent a mail drop or they've been a part of a mail drop. So you're actually able to use Marketo to look for that. And you're getting a little sneak peek into how the automation works in Marketo, but it's very simple. It could be like a data value change to a mail drop field of some kind, right? So Marketo is actually able to do this automation of of just taking what info you're putting in the file and doing that heavy lifting of like moving them from, from one status to the next based on how their profile looked a week ago during one of your nightly uploads to today. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It does. Great. The great thing about mapping this out is that it's not only, it's obviously visual, so all groups who are involved in this process can collaborate and say, hey, does this represent the journey that we want for our customers? Um, if not, what changes should we make? But it's also great from a reporting perspective, because then you actually have the numbers between each of these stages. And Marketo will also help to tell you how long are people staying in a given stage? You know, what are our conversion rates? Uh, are there any bottlenecks? So, for example, is it taking too long from when the time that we received the survey to when the appointment was scheduled? Right. Maybe you want that to be much quicker. So, reporting behind this also helps you to, to think about things like that. And one thing to think about, um, you will also see this stage under here that says recycle, and you'll see arrows coming from different stages. What this means is, for whatever reason, that individual did not take the next step. 
and we don't want them to just sit stagnant within the database. So we put people into a recycle stage so Marketo can automatically nurture those people until they're ready to engage again. So maybe it's just sending them more information on end-of-life services. And maybe that's an email a month. Uh, but that recycle stage is really important because not everyone is ready. Maybe, especially I think with your guys' area, it may take some of those people a few go-arounds or a few cycles with you to accept that, hey, it is a smart decision to make to, to pre prepare ahead for my end of life and to engage with those end of life services. So that recycling stage would be really important and you can even tailor this messaging based on responses you're hearing from your, uh, your call center. If maybe someone says, call me in six months or you know what, I don't think I have the funds. You can then tailor the messaging that you're sending during this recycle stage so it is appropriate for their objections. So the recycle stage could really be at any point in this this uh, line, right? We can set those criteria Sorry. ourselves. Yeah, I think. Sorry, people broke picking up a little bit. I think yeah, I'm far away from the mic. Um, so those recycle the recycle stage the, are those criteria criteria we can set ourselves and indicate where we want that. Uh, yep, absolutely. Yeah. So to give you some examples. Um, this could be a status being changed by your call center or, you know, anybody living inside of Dynamics. It can also be uh, maybe a period of inactivity. So if they do not engage with Percola in any fashion, maybe we automatically want to recycle them. Okay. Yeah. So there's like these negative filters that you can say, like, we have no activity log. With, you know, in this case, this is a great example here, even if, you know, if, if they're supposed to schedule their first appointment and they don't do it, then you can stick them in a recycle status and put them in a campaign that, that continues to notify them that they need to schedule this appointment um, or they're missing out. Um, you know, that, and then what you can even do is right now I don't have it yet. Like I'm putting people back in the survey receipt bucket or the mail drop bucket. Maybe I feel like creating a new connection there where I can actually just make them go back up into that schedule appointment directly from recycle. And then you can set up a rule for that. So it's really nice you have the flexibility to kind of start simple with this model. And then as you, you know, start to really perfect the process, you can begin to advance it and tune it a little bit. Um, and that's where you know, the flexibility helps it kind of last. It's not just you know, day one, and then it moves its utility after like a year. You should be able to keep enhancing it and building on it. Yeah. So, a really common one for you guys might be um, after the call center has gone through their number of touches, then they, be re then they become recycled. You don't expect call center reps to be the ones nurturing them. Um, so, it could even be after a certain number of touches, let's recycle them. So, I have a, I have a question. So, because um, the usage with Marketo is based on like active contact. Is there a way that once you've tried and kind of given a lead a shot, like let's say you give them 20 calls and then you send them through the whole nurture cycle, that they can be then kicked out of the system and say, you know, this person uh, is not going to respond? Is that is that common practice? or and, and if so, is that possible? It's definitely possible to completely remove someone from the system. So if you guys determine, I mean, it's Statistically speaking, after you have been reaching out to someone for six months, if it's a very low percentage that you actually get a hold of those people and it's not worth remarketing to them, you could delete them. Yeah, and okay. that's where it's super easy. You can do like, you know, has not done, has not looked at any web pages in the last 90 days, hasn't touched any email you sent them, hasn't filled out any form. You can get, you know, you can start off with like, simple concept of it, but then because of the way Marketo helps you define these activities, you really are allowed to define your own time period for that because your company is different. Some companies have year-long sales cycles. Yeah, but especially considering the, the population you guys are marketing to and why, I mean, that could be a way that you guys keep your database clean. Uh, you know, who knows? Some of these people could have passed away and then they're obviously never going to come back as yeah. a customer for you. 
Um, so that could be a way that you guys just clean the database as well. Um, there's no need to keep, for lack of a better word, or back, lack of a better phrase, dead leaks in there. Mm -hmm. um, no Oof. pun intended whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> um, if they're never going to potentially come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so it's all automated, right? They 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 hit their yeah. expiration date and they, they pop out. It, exactly. And what we're actually showing here is the way that you tell the system to do something. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, so what we would be looking at here is this person has not filled any form in the last 90 days. They have not filled out or visited any web pages in 90 days or opened an email. And how, so would, how would this not only, not only Oh, sorry, go ahead. How would this information be then translated back into our CRM? Is that this also an upload? Similar to yes, how we so for the time being, it would be an upload, but right. once Marketo is integrated, this would automatically be flowing back into Dynamics within five minutes. Okay. So that's what the sync looks like with the more updated uh, versions, and you can see sort of how that data maps here when the two are connected. And just to clarify, yeah. for, for Sam, for right now, we wouldn't be connected with Dynamics or like initially because our version is just too old, and no no marketing automation vendor supports our version because it's 2006. So it's so this this solution, which is like the daily upload, is the only solution for us right now. Uh, so so it's not like Marketo is they're able to integrate as much as any other people uh, any other company is. But uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chelsea. How how it would work when someone gets kicked out? Um, after we automate that in six months, when we do our nightly or daily like exchange of files, then back into our CRM, we would just receive the information that so all the people that were kicked out that would just get shot back into our CRM. So that way we could have we could know, hey, Sally and Joe were in our were in our email nurture campaign for six months, but they didn't click or do anything, so we kicked them out. Yep, exactly. So that's where the robustness of our whatever we call a bi-directional connection comes in, is you'll notice that these arrows on the individual levels as well as activities are flowing both from CRM to Marketo as well as from Marketo to CRM. And what's great is you can just go into Dynamics, and you know, this is a, a newer refresh kind of UI here, is all you have to do is just go into your setup options, and, and you can add a new field that's like, you know, the, the status field for the sake of Marketo being able to place in a very explicit update there. So you can say, like, communication status is suspended because they're old and today and you don't want to include them in campaigns right now. That way Marketo can make an update to their profile on the Marketo end, and then with the next sync synchronization, it pushes them into CRM, and then you see the exact same update there. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. So, any questions about that that journey or uh, Marketo automatically moving people from a stage or listening for particular actions? How are we feeling about that? Do you have any questions or confusion there? No, I think we're good right now. Okay, perfect. So, another area that we wanted to visit was the lead database section. Now, this, I think this is going to be really powerful for you guys. Um, especially right now, this is something that you can leverage regardless of Marketo being integrated with uh, Dynamics. So I know one of the core use cases here will be uploading lists. So this is where you would go to upload a CSV file. So I've got an example of lists here. So I'll, while we do that, I'll kind of distinguish between the two types of lists in Marketo. So there are what we call static lists, or just lists. That is when you are uploading a file that you need distinctly kind of tracked. Um, so if you guys did, you'll have like daily file uploads, you can overwrite the same static list, but that list stays fixed based on who was in it when you upload it. Um, the other type of list in Marketo is called a smart list, and that is the dynamic segment that keeps itself up to date based on the criteria that you select for a profile. So we'll talk about both of those. Um, but we'll start with a regular list. So when you guys want to do a list upload, I'm going to do it from the Marketo UI in the front end, which is if you have a CSV file and you just want to manually upload it, this is definitely doable once a day. You can do this more than once a day. 
Um, or you can do this same process via API, and it's basically the same thing. Um, so if you guys want to generate a CSV doc out of DRM and place it somewhere where we can grab an update, that's totally fine too. Um, so what we would do here is inside of my list area, I can click on whatever I want. Or I can right click and do new, or import list. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to select the file that I wish to upload that maybe this is what I took from TRM. So I'll find my list. I've got a lead list here. So I've got my document and it's going to auto detect that it's a CSV. I already know it is, but you can set up different specific file formats. Um, and then what we're going to be able to do is dedupe leads off of specific profile fields that we want to check against the existing Marketo database. So right now I don't really have to do much path to select the file. Then I press next. And this is really one of the convenience factors in Marketo is from this view, what I'm doing here is I'm exposing the column header for each column from the file in this first list column. In the Marketo field, it's simply just asking me where should that go in the Marketo database. So when I click the drop down, I get a list of fields that are in the Marketo database that I add in based on the data I know is coming from CRM. And you have, again, full flexibility to create as many fields as you need to match up exactly by name with the fields that you see in Dynamics today. Are you able to? Upload activities as well. Like right now, it just looks like they're like actual lead information. But is there a way to upload like a like a activity history? Like if we placed a phone call, or if we send a survey, or if there was any other action item on our end that we record in CRM? Can you upload that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if you have like date values and then like the topic of the call and like you know, notes or like a description of the call and other kind of like coded references, like if you have like a different, you know, different outcome codes for the calls and things like that. Um, all of that still displays in fields that you can use then to create a, what we call a smart list to dynamically pull just the people with certain types of activities. Gotcha. So you shouldn't have to go through and generate different lists of different activities. You can just pull and the information you have on every field of every person, just bulk toss that into Marketo and then do the slicing and dicing with our smart list, which would be much more convenient for you guys uh, than constantly exporting the right list from the start or the defined list went from TRM and the database. So um, I can map this again to whatever kind of field and then when I click next, I'm going to give it a list name. So this is what what name do I want this to have when I look it up in Marketo? This might be you know, daily file upload uh, you know, 6, 17, or 16, 2016, if that's what I feel like doing. Now, what you can also do is just update an existing smart list um, by adding the net new changes out of the document, but I'm doing a brand new update. So I'm just setting the name. You can send an alert. Now, this is where you guys can also do some internal alerting as you upload the file. So if you wanted to put in, you know, like if I put in my email address here, then I'm going to get a notification when this list is completed. Um, and this might be useful for other people who want to know, okay, the file upload has happened. I can go look at the refreshed audience and start to run campaigns and do So the revenue stage will map to the model, or you can decide to overwrite it, or you can um, just let it kind of start people off in the initial stages. So that's where we can base the activities you're uploading and try to drop somebody into, you know, if they're already in a mail drop, put and upload that list and have everybody go into the mail drop status. Um, the acquisition program is pretty rarely used. This is associated mostly to events. So if you have a list that uh, it comes after you've been at an event that you have to upload, you can explicitly tie it to like, you know, boss if you're like on a, in a show in Boston for some reason. And you would like to make sure this list gets automatically categorized to say, I obtained, I acquired these names because I was at this event. Or this, I was present at the thing I'm tracking with Marketo that I created a program. And maybe if I click a lunch, for example, when the lunch is even right. on, if Selma attends, did she bring Louise, her friend, who is in the program, that would be maybe an example. Gotcha. So that's 
really the whole process from the UI. And then when I click import, all those names go in and it'll give me like a little cute status to tell me what, how much progress has completed and then give me a little notification when it's done, especially if I put my email address in the other box here. So there's really not a whole lot to it. We aim to make this simple. So um, hopefully that's consistent with what you guys were expecting or hoping to see out of the list of the process. So not this actually is part of Marketo platform. So hmm. if you weren't blown away, that's okay. <laughs> so any questions about that piece so far? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So probably one of the more exciting lists, I think, instead of just a list upload, would be uh, what we call smart lists. So smart lists are dynamic lists that you create based on you know set criteria, which we'll walk you through here in just a second. But the advantage to smart lists are they're always remaining up to date. So as Marketo collects new information or as new information is inputted into Marketo, we will update these lists automatically for you. So this could be something that's useful for account managers if they want to keep track of engagement in their territory. Um, you could do that by telling us what your territory is and what actions you want us to look for. You can create subscriptions for any of these lists so they're automatically emailed to you know, each individual account manager or someone different on a daily, weekly, monthly, whatever case you want. So I, I'd be curious. Um, you know, when it comes to the list that you guys are handling, you know, specifically to your field regions, um, you know, so Evan, Richard, Megan, maybe you guys can give me an idea of like how, what's the data point that you would use to like define your patch in your territory, if that's how you look at it. Would it be funeral home ID? Yeah, and okay. yeah. Well, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Uh, I almost think that, I mean, if we're actually sending out the emails, we'd probably look at it at either a regional consultant or funeral home level. I don't think that we'd probably look at it a whole, at a whole territory level. I could be wrong, unless there was some campaign that we were doing um, that specifically warranted it. Okay. Yeah, I think really what we're trying to make sure is relevant is just the, the nature of the data we're using. So we have zip code and job title and probably the map we use doesn't sound like that's exactly what you guys use, but we just want to make sure it's relatable to you guys because the experience you'll have is that inside this roster of quote unquote filters are are this word filters are just what what fields from CRM do you want to use? And in those files you're uploading data. What's the name of the field or column that has the data you need to find your segment? So if I scroll through, you'll see all the fields that are created here. And if I search for something like region, and I have a field for that, then I'll see only the fields from, from my database that match that search I did. That way I can keep it simple and I can just drag and drop region in. And I can select one or more values out of that. And like we mentioned before, all you're doing here is segmenting out uh, a little partial audience from your whole database. Um, so after you do one of those nightly uploads, I'm just going to go back up to this main screen. So when I click on my overall lead database, I can see I have you know, 535,000 marketable leads in here. Maybe there's only 1,000 people on this smart list mm -hmm. because I'm using specific profile attributes. Yeah. But then as, that, as I add to that number of 535,000, Maybe a hundred of, of a new group of people that I upload in one of those static lists also matches this criteria. They will automatically be moved into this list. So whether you're an account manager who wants to monitor this list, this new edition, or you're trying to run a campaign that's targeting this group, and you don't want to have to worry if my list refreshed and up to date, that is all a, a non-factor with this market of smart list. Cool. And can can you receive uh, specific reporting just for smart lists to see how the engagement is going just for the individuals in certain smart lists? Definitely. So when you show an analytics in any of our reports, basically, um, you'll notice like if I want to look at my lead by lead source, which is a really popular one in Marketo, you'll notice that every report also has its own smart list tab where I can just go in and I can, I can say for this report, I would like to make sure that I'm only referencing uh, a certain profile attribute, but then this, this is what we were planning on showing when we get into 
of the campaigning is you can just reuse the definitions you already created. So if I type in member, member of is a concept in Marketo that's, that's kind of programmed in. So I can just say a member of my smart list of you know, account manager wants to make this like Megan's list. Gotcha. So and are we able to export this data into our CRM system? So if we um, had a the list, the idea would be that, that we would be able to place enough intel back in CRM using that integration to do it. And then if you did want to export this data um, out of Marketo, you would get a CSV, doc, a CSV document. And then depending on the nature of like how your CRM environment is set up, you might be able to just upload that document that comes out of the Marketo report, or you can enter it in. But without that integration, some of that is still going to be a little bit manual today. Is, is it also possible to search for, say, phone calls instead of looking for a lead record, a person's record? So, yeah, you could start with, like, from the phone, from, like, the activity of a phone call. Um, so, you know, what we might do is just add specific fields for that and then be able to look it up or we can add an explicit activity type that would be a part of the history set of filters which are specific to activities like filled out form lead was created we can create a new type of activity that is phone call was lost so according to According to my understanding, Russ, we that's really up on our end, and we have flexibility, right? Whatever is in our CRM, we can put into Marketo, and then we can then we can search by anything that is in our CRM because Marketo is literally a mirror of what we upload. Great, yes, that's exactly the way to think about it. Okay, so how this could be helpful for account managers that you could set up smart lists by regional consultants or even funeral homes. So you can see engagement and responses specific to certain regions or I'm certain sure. accounts. I could see it being really helpful if we had like an agent that needed more appointments, yep. as well as reaching out to the funeral planning center. If there was email addresses, we could kick off like a smart list campaign for the agent to yep. help drive activity. Yeah, cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, great. Yeah, this is all the brainstorming that we love to hear on the call. Totally. And would there be a use case even where you might pull a smart list to someone that has, you know, maybe opened an email and you would give that to the call center to follow up on to then target people who have shown some sort of engagement to set appointments? I mean, would that be relevant at all? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that and I think that that's probably in the beginning stages that's something that we're looking for the most. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is now you buy you don't even have to be the middleman. You can just add their the, the call center rep. So Megan, if you want to get this and those three call center reps that should get this link also. All four of you can get it at the same time. And would there be a way that we could get that data in the CSV file so that, it, that we could on our end automatically create that phone call for our caller, or is it something that would have to be emailed? No, so the, the CSV file would be emailed to you. Yeah, it would be in the email. Yeah. Attached. Okay. There's an attached. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And you can even set it to previews of how many, like you can set it so that the first 50 rows are actually in the email itself and it's just a table. And then what's great is you actually do have the ability to, when I'm putting a smart list, this is one of the criteria, criteria I'm filtering down off of. Then when I click to the lead tab, it shows me who matches that definition. But then there's also this concept of creating the view of what other data elements that are in that file you might want to see about. Right? So you can create like a call center view. And to clarify, we wouldn't require anyone from your call center to log in Marketo. Right. We're just talking about getting the, the data out to them directly. It's probably not a best practice actually to have your call center rep log into Marketo at all. Right. Uh, so just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. So this gotcha. is like, yeah, that makes you, know, sense. you know the data points that the call center would want to see in this file. So it's not just every field you have on these people. You can pick and choose what fields do the call center reps actually see in this export document. It's only what's relevant to them. It's really neat that you can do that um, and switch between the views. So that it's basically deciding what columns you're showing here. I have job title, company email. Maybe none of this is useful for the call center reps. So, so 
anyway, that's kind of the idea behind the view here is that you can really tune the list both to include who you want and then you see exactly the details about those people that you want as well. That's awesome. That would help out a lot. And another way to think about it too, uh, account managers, this could even be used if you wanted to track engagement of the funeral home directors that you're engaged with. That's where filters like title could come into play. You know, the regular consumers that you're trying to set appointments with, they probably wouldn't have a title, um, but you can use that field to just, hey, which of the funeral home directors that I work with, who's opening up my email, or who is showing the most engagement? Um, so these lists are really flexible, and they can target multiple audiences. So. Yeah, uh, one thing I talked to Chelsea about before this phone call is I was trying to give her a better idea of what account meant, what you guys could use this for. And I said, when we start new campaigns or we try new ideas, we have to get approval at the funeral home level, and you guys need to run it by RCs and funeral home directors. So, one cool thing Chelsea told me is that we have uh, Marketo has an Outlook plugin, so you could send like PDFs or um, some sort of document that previews the email campaign or whatever specific nurture campaign we're doing, and you could send it out to the RC and the funeral home director for their to look at and for their approval, and then you would be able to go in and track to see when and if they actually opened the email and clicked on it to see if if they read it or not. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's nice. So we give a little outlook demo here. We're looking at my inbox here. Um, so you'll notice a couple of new buttons when you download the Marketo plugin, Marketo message, and log with Marketo. The first Marketo message, this gives you access to templates that your lovely marketing team has created for you and has just published to Marketo. So the benefit here is, especially with events, you can see that it's really helpful. I can't keep track of all the details of an event that we may be hosting or putting on. Um, or maybe details of different campaigns that you are thinking about running but want to run by the funeral home directors first. Uh, it's great to already have this template recreated. Or maybe if it's an event that you're uh, hosting or sponsoring with the funeral home director, you can send the email to them and then they can use this. So it's nice to have access to templates like this already pre-created. When you send a message on the fly, you're going to want to press the send and track button. This will then allow Marketo to track when someone's opened it, if they've clicked specific links in the email, et cetera. And then any inbound messages that you get, you can also log with Marketo. So again, that's tracked as well. So the idea is, it's Michael Caden's eye job to create new campaigns, email nurture campaigns. Um, but, and then you guys can have access to it, send send an example to the funeral home directors so they can, you know, approve it before we start a new campaign for specific accounts. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. All those messages would just live right in here. You could go through. I don't know if we'd have that many for you, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. You know, it's probably better that you don't have that many anyway, so, no, that's good. Okay. Great. Any questions about the Outlook plugin? I don't think so. All right, great. So back in Marketo, I think we'll jump into uh, a campaign now to show you how you create a campaign which can be used to send outgoing messages or it can be used for internal updates. Maybe you want to send, you know, at some point you want to send a call center an alert or an account manager wants to receive an alert if a certain action happens. Workflows in Marketo are really powerful for that. So we'll walk you through how to create one and some of the different options that you have. Yeah. I'll pick up the page a little bit. I'm going to make sure we don't do it too long. I'll actually talk to the R at least for work five. By the way, just to do a quick time check, if we needed to run a little task for you guys have time. So we can schedule a follow-up. Yeah. i got to go in about five minutes. But you get some I think I think we're the the yeah the large majority of us can stay a little bit after four so. Okay yeah I'll be brief here um, you know we're, at this point we've covered enough of the fundamentals that we can start to, to move faster anyway so I think you'll see some consistency but the workflow Chelsea's talking about if you want to think of it as you know building up a house or a building this smart campaign is like the brick 
or you know the, the piece of wood that you would use uh, in building up uh, as big a structure as you want. So this little smart campaign creates a three-step process, and it's very simple and repeatable. So it's really like a who, what, when sort of progression of steps. Who am I targeting? What's going to happen? And when is it going to happen? Don't forget the um, wow. So, well, that. I said you forgot the wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sort of not really a step, it's just like naturally what happens after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, so, so this part one section yeah. is just look familiar. What we can do here is call a member of a list that we've already created. So like we did before. Yep. The, the difference here is that you'll notice we now have triggers. Triggers are our kettle listening for actions to occur. And when that action occurs, this workflow will initiate. So we can say someone of a particular list when they maybe visit the website or when they open an email. Those are certain emails or actions we can listen for and then respond in real time. Right. So this is where whether you want to just look up everybody in one of those stages of your model. So we talked about this, this really being the driving force for the ideal path. It really simplifies your segmentation. You don't need to set up a long if then statement to go, okay, if I get people in acquisition, Great, I'll send them an email. If they click, let's do the mail drop activity. If they don't, let's keep doing things. Okay, the mail drop people reacted, great. This is doing all of that. So your campaign could be nice and concise. Let me just look up everybody in my mail drop stage. So I don't have to run a giant campaign to facilitate that change happening. Or like Chelsea mentioned, as soon as that stage changes, so their new stage is now mail drop. The very status of that being updated will be the, the trigger or firing moment for this campaign. What it does is you have, you have to decide it. This is just what is it we know is an event that we want to react in real time to automatically. Does that seem pretty, pretty straightforward? Yeah. Uh, just, okay. just for account managers, for your information, we, we've been talking to uh, KBM about buying email appends for or email addresses for everyone that we mail we mail to so hypothetically the idea is that once we do a mail drop we could send a, a nurture email saying hey from the funeral home we just sent you a survey that's you know really helps us understand what's going you know more in the community please be out on the look for it so they could trigger that email and then once they send a response uh, from the actual survey back to us then through this, as soon as when we get a response, uh, we can trigger another email uh, to them saying, hey, thanks for your response. Look forward to a phone call from the FP, like our call center or from our funeral home in the next a week or whatever. Um, so it's just, it's just a better way of engaging them along the path. Yeah. And that's where we really allow a lot of flexibility. You can see we have some pretty explicit kind of common actions like click link in email fills out form, visits web page, but since you know you guys have some specific data, this data value changes trigger is perhaps one of the most flexible, powerful parts of our kiddo when you really get down to the capabilities is this is literally just saying what's the profile field and what is it changing from something to something else. Mm. And like maybe your call your mail drop field was blank before and now it's not. And like that's enough of a cue to say, let's run a, a campaign. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's a really nice way to kind of just knowing the data in your ecosystem. Uh, it's a nice way to kind of turn automation on its head and just use kind of fundamental elements like this. So anyway, just wanted to highlight that as well. Um, so regardless of what triggers you're setting up, if it's and emails, or to get more intelligence to account managers, then the flow is where you decide what happens. So, you know, very traditionally, send an email back. So whenever somebody does the action you define with the smart list trigger, they'll get an email. And this is where you can do, like, send the email, wait, you know, a one week, and then only send a follow-up to the people who have, you know, maybe you're, like, trying to guide people to fill out a particular form or something. So if they still haven't filled out the form that you're looking for, let's send them some kind of reminder email. Otherwise, we don't need to do anything because the implication is they did fill out the form and we're good. Yeah. I have a question. So, popping in. 
Um, can we specifically remove like single, like just an individual from these smart lists, or, or is it kind of if they have the same um, criteria? So yeah, I mean, depending on how you want to do it, if there's like a group of individuals that you know uh, shouldn't be in this, then you can always use like the field that, that it would contain. Otherwise, you can just literally say like email address is not, and then just multi-select the emails individually with people that you don't want to be a part of this campaign if you didn't want to do that. Could you add a smart list? It as kind of a filter, so you have two lists working yeah. in conjunction? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like member of, and then you can just say member of smart list, so their lead is not in these lists. Okay. Because we have, we have a DNC uh, list that I would worry about a little bit, but again, I'm, you know, this is, okay. this is all brand new. So, um, yeah, I think that if we yeah. can just have that, that would solve it. That makes sense. Great. And you'll notice within Marketo, there's always more than one way to accomplish the same task. So sometimes it's just brainstorming with your enablement manager and talking through it and figuring out what method you guys prefer and which one makes the sense to you. Awesome. So the send alert is the, is the option to get an internal reminder of something. So this is still an email being sent by Marketo, but it's not being sent to your leads and your audience. It's being sent to maybe an account manager. So if we're establishing ownership of accounts in CRM and passing that to Marketo, we can just let that field take precedence, knowing that that is tied to the CRM profile and to the email address it should go to. Otherwise, we can put in manual email addresses here. So maybe it's you know, Richard wants to leave, so we're going to send him a list. Um, or send him an update about the individual person that kicked off that trigger. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is instead of getting a list of a bunch of people, this is I want individual alerts of this thing happening. So every time it happens, I know who did it, when, and how I can reach back out. Yeah. And, and then email can contain, contain all that detail. And here at Marketo, since that could be potentially a lot of people that you're getting alerts for, you'll want to make sure that they're really high value actions, uh, not just maybe a website visit or something like that, because we don't. The, the purpose here isn't to bombard anyone with emails and make it impossible to get through. We just want to call attention to the actions that are the most high value. And is it possible to like record that data into a file that we can just upload into our system? Or does it have to come through like individual email? So that you could it can come in an email if you want, and then also you'll have a smart list capturing all the people who have done that action. Gotcha. And then that can also be emailed to you on whatever frequency. So uh, what would be an example of a high value action for you guys that you would want to be aware of, maybe in real time? Uh, maybe if they filled out a form, like a request to contact form. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great plan. So we do the same thing. Yeah. Like Brock said, I get an alert every time someone fills out a contact me form on our website. So you could receive the alert in real time as it's done. And then if you wanted, depending on how many you usually get on a day or weekly cadence, you could just have a, a running list of everyone that filled out the contact me form in the last seven days. And that could be emailed to you, you know, daily or at the end of the week, or it could be maybe anybody who's filled out that form that day. So you have um, some options on you know, how many people you want it to capture and then how frequently you want that email with the file sent to you. I have a question about the uploading lists. Um, sounds like uh -huh. we, we might have to do that pretty frequently. What is kind of the time frame for like? certain file sizes of how long it would take to upload this information? Um, I, I, the, the speed of the system shouldn't be an issue in that. It's just a matter of, of you know, how many, how long it would take you to, to, to go into CRM and, and pull that list. And some of that depends on the configuration of your CRM environment and how complex that can be. Um, but typically all you would need to do is just have like a report or a list in, in CRM and only looking at the last 24 hours of activity, and then you can just, you know, every morning or every evening, whenever you feel like doing it, you can just export that list from CRM in bulk, right? We're not talking about any more than like one or a few list uploads 
per, you know, per, yeah. uh, ideally be one per day of everything, and then you just use the smart links and smart campaigns to pick out of that bulk upload. Yeah. Which could be just like one per day. It depends on how, how often you need to update the data. As the, well. the reason I'm asking is that I can imagine, I don't know if we can uh, choose that criteria from our CRM. I I wonder if we'll have to upload upload our entire database every day. Um, so I wonder what the time um, what the time frame is to upload yeah, that can, into our Mercado. We can actually you know do a dedicated discussion about that if you guys want to yeah. just to kind of discuss the options. Maybe maybe what we can do is we can do a go to meeting like this where we pass you control and then you can actually show us the nature of how it would look from the CRM view. Like show us your CRM environment where you would pull it. And that might give us just the little missing piece we need to say, yes, okay, here's exactly how you can do it, and, and here's how often. Yeah. And that that's probably something that our IT department would have to work with you on. It's just that's a that's a good it. idea, though. But I don't think you need to upload your entire database. That would that would assume that you know everybody has made some sort of update or change every day, which yeah. is modified. I when we. Uh, so, yeah, we should continue that discussion. I know we're a, a minute over time, so I don't want to keep anyone. Um, but hopefully that was a good little snapshot and smart kind of to give you guys some ideas on how we can automate your current process and even help inform you even more on what people are doing uh, on your, you know, in your patch or on your website or how they're interacting with your content. Um, but you know, maybe we can, you know, get feedback from you guys on our, you know, um, I think it's a good idea. Well, we've had since we've had some discussions. IT has been on a phone call with Marketo, and I think yeah. they've they've figured out that we would have to upload our whole database. They could filter it by those who just have email addresses, so those that we wanted to upload, so we wouldn't have to upload. Yeah. A thousand, yeah, thousands a day. So, um, did you, did any of you guys have any other questions? Um, Megan, was your question answered that you yeah. had before? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hey, Chelsea, just, uh, I know you talked about before we went into this last stage, so you talked about how we could notify our, um, our call center um, about when, like, these actions are taken. Um, I know it's not as easy because it won't be, native integration with Dynamics because our version's so old, but what are the solutions or workarounds right now that we can alert our call center when someone opens up an email and saying, hey, this person's a hot lead? Yep, exactly. So we'll go back into, so going back to the smart work section of this workflow, we accomplish that same alerting process with the workflow. So instead of, um, I forget what our actions were that we were listening for, yeah. um, but in the smart list section, we'll now look at, so we'll, we'll listen for an email open. So we'll pull in the open email, and then here you have the ability to say, dictate which email we're listening for. Mm -hmm. So you can name the emails based on you know, what the content is, what the topic is. Um, you can multi-select as many emails as you need. You can even put a you know, blanket and say maybe it contains like what uh, just you know you're looking for part of the name that you've given in 20 emails. So you don't have to pick all 20 manually. Gotcha. Um, it's, it's convenient to look for maybe it contains the word funeral. So like that's a lot probably a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know that that's a way to listen broadly for an email being opened and then and like Chelsea mentioned. Flow would not need to be any send email steps back to your leads and audience. It would just be a send alert step. And then here's what's kind of nice is like how many call center reps do you actually have? 70, 80. A good amount. Oh, a lot. Okay. I was just thinking that we do have like this ability to kind of randomly distribute people lightly. So basically, what you do is just say random sample, and then the person, this number you enter is the percent. So if you have 10 people, what you would do is just blanket any email open and randomly send 10% of all of the people that pass through across your call center staff. Okay. Um, and you just would fill in each person's name here in the email field. So that way it's like randomly round robin assigning essentially. Yeah, yeah. and the way we have it set up now is... 
our planners, our, our callers hold on to the leads for life typically. So we have one planner calling the same family. Maybe you're breaking up a little bit, right? We can make out. Can you hear us now? Yeah, that sounds more complicated. Yeah, we us we usually have one caller calling the same family for life. So I'm sure we could do like a send to account a uh, lead owner as opposed to the account owner and that would probably work really well. I'm doing it again. Okay, sorry to cut out again. Um but when Marketo because I I think for my note the call center is living out of dynamics, is that correct? No. I mean okay. well n n no. Not right now, no. They're, we're still in the, our old version of Dynamics. The, the question that Megan had uh, is how our call center works is when someone is assigned a lead, and our, our, someone in our call center is assigned a lead, they usually own it for life uh, just because we like the continuity of, of calling uh, of the same person calling that family back. It creates a good relationship. Um, right. So I, I'm, we're hoping that there's some way that we could send an alert and that's that's a file in our CRM, right? It's correct. It's lead owner, yeah. and then the per, the the em, employee's yeah. name in our call center shows up as lead owner. So we're hoping there's some, there's Perfect. some way we could filter it to um, every single every single person that opened an email for, um, and then you could send them out by lead owner into our that, call center. That's, uh, a native function is uh, that's greatly uh, you know simplified by the fact you guys have that. Um, you guys have that lead owner related to the call center, that chief. If that's already in place and you guys have one activity, one send alert to drag in, and then you can set it to lead owner and it dynamically leads that field. Awesome. That's how it would go. Perfect. Glad we, glad we, we touched on that first one. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so I think that's really going to work out well then. Give it in. I was going to say that Marketo could create like a call center owner field if you needed it, but at any point if you got it. So yeah, we already have a field in our in our CRM for that. Perfect. So we're good. Yep. Um, any other questions or any other use cases we could cover here? I had a question. You you briefly touched base on the duplicate check when you're uploading a list. Uh, mm -hmm. Oftentimes we have folks who one reason or another, we, we get updated information from them. Maybe it's a new address or new phone number. Um, so when you're uploading that, obviously that would be something that would have been modified, changed, so we'd be including that on the list. How does that look for the lead already in the system? And does that update it with the new information on that most current list? Or will it, is it customizable to what we say, this should outweigh it if it's more recent data? How would that work? Yeah, so you do have the ability to to, well, okay, so let me back up. So the default way it looks for duplicates is email address. So typically email address isn't changing. And even if it does, what we can do is establish like a separate field to capture like the old email address. So that when you update their valid email address, you're like writing whatever was in their, their email address to a different field that it checks on. So even if they update their own email address, then you can keep track of that same person. Um, but it really is looking for an email address. So anything else that's in the file, like you said, will just overwrite. Um, when it comes to the manual process, um, what you can do is if you know like a field is, I, I, I'm not going to go all the way back to it, but you know, if you have a drop down select, you start with the column of the file in the left hand side. I'm sorry, my network seems to be having issues. I'm not sure if my phone call is going to drop, but um, like first name, right? I can decide that goes to first name, but then I might have a like, customer class. And I would rather Marketo just keep the data it has. I can skip customer class as a field that doesn't go into Marketo's database during the upload. I'm going to say don't map that column to anything. Only okay. map G and A to B. Okay. Right? So I hope you guys, I don't know if you guys can see me navigating that at all since I just got the yeah. your network has been established. But um, that that way in the list when you go upload it, you can just say, I don't want this field to be a part of the update because I'd rather the existing data be precedence or stay preserved. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then in, in the integrated uh, situation, when you're leveraging this connect this connector, every five minutes, this firing 
and it will keep the most recently updated data by default, and then you can still say, like, you know, dynamics is the system of record, so if there's a conflict, keep whatever CRM has. That's a pretty common request. Yeah, and, and, and Megan's worked a lot more closely with our email campaign, so I'm a little rusty on that. Uh, but I think that, yeah, sometimes we, we get folks that give us an email address, but no phone number, no no address, anything. And that's really vital information for our, obviously, for our call center. So I think, sure. and sometimes in those emails, we get updated information, um, phone numbers, addresses, all of that. And so I think if we're just thinking through it, hey, this lead, we have an active email address. We can see they're opening it. Now we have their phone number that can, you know, one of these workflows kick off a phone call. So, yeah. And a really popular approach to, to helping with that is to leverage Marketo landing pages and forms so that in your emails that you're sending, and you can even put links to these things in your direct mail assets, put URLs that somebody can go type in easily, um, and then they hit a Marketo page that very concisely asks them for just a you know, phone number, the key things you need for your call center. That way there's a digital format for them to just to directly inject that into the Marketo database, um, and then our call center alerts can function more efficiently because they're placing data directly into your automated system. And then, if you need to pull that up, that out, and update CRM, you always have the option to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's that's gonna uh, gonna work out nicely, both standalone and then gonna be made more streamlined once we get that full integration built. Yeah, and um, and how we envision, I th I think to kind of answer Evan's question is um, for for those people we don't have phone numbers to, we can send out emails, and then Marketo has we can create a link and it's a landing page, um, and then it can have dynamic content. So based off, it can be place the funeral home logo based mm -hmm. off dynamic content, and a and it can pull. So they would see the funeral home logo on the landing page. And then they could just fill out their phone number and information, and then that would get updated. And it could, I mean, yeah, and like he mentioned, even having the survey available to fill out. On, I yeah, mean, that's a possible. Yeah. That could be. Yeah, it could be huge. You yeah, only get one and a half. Yeah, doing a digital survey will survey. probably get a lot more capture for you guys if that's not if it's mainly like you know a tactile asset, a tactile paper delivered survey. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. Especially as you pass each each decade of their generation now to get more and more people on in digital uh, markets. I know you can be now. I mean that's my yeah. uh, tech savvy. Yeah. Well, only one we go visit, right? And they're standing there at the door with their laptops <laughs> Um but yeah, I think that's gonna be big for you guys just being able to to kind of track this all better in one spot and, and learn how those patterns evolve. So like you can well, that's in smart with the age of these people and then see like when it's somebody between the age of 60 and over, how often do they hit the landing page versus people younger than that? And, you know, I think that's what we were talking about at dinner. Um, it's just, you know, ways that we can start to cater to the different communication preferences of the different ages of people and as that changes over time. To give you guys a little bit stay cool. in on that. Absolutely. Um, Awesome. Well, did you? Did anyone else in the room have any other questions right now? We hey, uh, Russ and Chelsea. Thanks again for hopping on another demo. I know you gave me and Michael one a, a month or so ago. So sorry for repeating, but this is no great. This is great information for our account managers because they would also be heavily involved in 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 this whole process of, and I think it'd be beneficial for both sides. So we we appreciate you hopping on. Yeah, that's great. Well, let us know if any other questions come up or if you think of a use case and you want to know how it can be done, can it be done, let us know. Um, we're more than happy to schedule another session or just hop on a phone call. So let us know. Sounds good, Chelsea. I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Sounds great. Have a good one, guys. Hey, thanks. Thank Thank you. Adios. Thank you. Sorry, Russ. <laughs> Sorry, that went long, guys. No, no, no. Um, when is there a time with service? So, I know you three were an act on, correct, yesterday? Mm -hmm. So, I've seen, oh, you weren't.